as I was getting my heart ready for worship this morning and I was thinking about some different things, my mind went to a song that I remember, actually remember the, the course of the medley to it just a, a few seconds ago, really. And uh, it was a song that we did in a Christmas cantata many years back, and it was called Mary's Song. And it just meant something like, my soul doth magnify the Lord. My soul doth magnify the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. My soul doth magnify the Lord. It's a beautiful, beautiful little song. It's called Mary's Song. And I started thinking, oh, I'd love for there to be just a great worship song that we could do that would maybe be from Joseph's perspective. You know, maybe something from him, you know. We've heard songs sung from Joseph and to the angel and to the baby and all this stuff. But I just couldn't think of something. And, and I thought, you know what I, I just really like to do, I think, is, is maybe just the song I stand in awe. You know? And I started thinking through the words of I stand in awe. And I thought, this almost sounds like what Joseph might have felt in his heart of hearts as he approached the baby Jesus and began to look in his eyes and began to see this one that he recognized as the one the angel had promised, the Savior. The one come to save the world from their sins. And I couldn't help but think through these words and imagine what it must have been like. So I've always told my friends, they said, what's it like to have a baby? What was it like? I said, it was all emotions possible, wrapped up in one feeling. There was terror, there was excitement, there was
feeling of love and mercy and compassion is that Jesus has offered to me. Because as we understand his life and as we understand his ministry, we see Jesus at a certain point in time giving up himself. Not fighting off the soldiers, not calling down the thousands of angels, but willingly surrendering himself. Just to be an example, just to be seen, no. To shed his blood as the atonement of our sin. So he took sin upon himself on the cross and he experienced what you experienced. You see, no matter where you are in life, Jesus understands you. He knows where you are. So as he gave his life on Calvary's cross, just before he told his disciples, do this in remembrance of me, that you would take the bread that's broken, that's a symbol of my body, that you would drink this cup, the symbol of my blood, that you would remember. So I pray this morning that you'll remember his sacrifice, that you'll remember his call to your life to come and to be made new. So as we prepare our hearts this morning, I pray that in your own heart of hearts, that you'll remember and you'll ask for his cleansing once again as we take. Gentlemen, would you bless these in? Lord, as we look in the manger, all we see is you taking upon yourself human flesh. You came and lived among us. Then, a little over 33 years, you stood at the table, or sat at that table, held up the bread and said, this is my body. Because you had taken up a body. That body came, lived, and as you stated to those gathered, was broken for us. We take of the bread today, remembering your broken body for us. In Jesus' name. Thank you, dear Jesus, for this cup. emblem of your blood that you shed that we might have eternal life with you that by your shed blood we might be healed and walk in glory with you and be with you for eternity we give you praise we give you honor we give you glory and pray your blessings upon each cup that is taken this day to bring glory and honor to you in your precious name. Amen. You may be seated. As always, if you know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, we invite you to take with us this morning.